decorations and get busy. Where's Uncle Joe? In the dining room, Mom. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you promised to hang that sign out front for us. Kate, I've only got two hands and one mouth. <laughs> well, I guess the girls and I can manage it. How about a little help from your hobo friend? Who? That no good moocher that's taking you for free room and board. I presume you're referring to Mr. Norman Curtis. I'm referring to Nutty Norman, the freeloader. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Mr. Curtis may be temporarily financially embarrassed, but he is an ambitious, intelligent, refined, well-educated gentleman. Don't waste all that hot air. Put it in here. <laughs> You're going to be sorry when you find out where he is right now. In the kitchen, eating up all the food? <laughs> no, sir. He's gone to Pixley with Floyd and Charlie. He's got a plan to attach a flat car to the back of the train, put benches on it, and bring 50 extra people to our jamboree. Now, where would he get a flat car? He, he says he has connections with the railroad. <laughs> His only connections are with a knife and fork. Well, Floyd and Charlie thought enough of his plan to take him into Pixley with them. In fact, they gave him the throttle. That's dangerous. Why? You might put ketchup on it and eat it. <laughs> he sure looks happy, don't he? Of course he does. Poor old hobo, all of his life he's been riding the rods, and now he's at the throttle of the Hooterville Cannonball. Hey, Norman. Yeah. You really think you can get that flat car? Well, I told you, fellas, I got connected with this railroad. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Curtis is out of the city for a few days. Secretary of Labor? Yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office. No, I'm sorry. He won't be able to go to Washington for the White House conference. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office? No, no, I'm sorry. He's someplace between Hooterville and Pixley. I don't know where they are either. Uncle Joe and I'll watch from the sidelines. Well, speak for yourself, Kate. I can shake a foot with any of these young bucks. Come on, Uncle Joe. Oh, come on. One, two, three, four. Come on, Here's the same you can three, do. Four. Look, two more fellas. Now we've all got partners. Come on, Charlie. We'll show you a dance with the jamboree. Hold it, hold it, girls. I'm afraid there ain't gonna be a jamboree. Oh, no, what are you talking about? There's no way for the folks to get here. That fella Curtis has wrecked the cannonball. Wrecked the cannonball? What? He just as good as wrecked it. Busted the throttle right smack off. Can't run a train without a throttle. How'd it happen? He tried to show off going up Bleaker's Hill. Yanked the throttle back so hard he snapped it right in two. Oh, Put in there, oh. pulled a rod right out of the baller. Yeah, Floyd and I had to pound it back with a block of wood. Shut off the steam. Well, what'd you do, walk all the way from Bleaker's Hill? No, we let it roll backwards and coasted to here. <laughs> well, Kate, what do you think of your refined, intelligent Mr. Curtis now? He's wrecked a train and ruined our jamboree. I hope you're satisfied. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Kate. Go get him something to eat. He's probably hungry after all he did today. I don't know what to say. Take a crack at goodbye. Oh, Joe. Charlie, 
Can't this rattle be fixed? I'm afraid we'd have to get a new one. A new old one? They ain't made them like that in 50 years. Might as well face it, Kate. The cannonball can't be fixed in time to bring the folks to the jamboree. Yes, it can. Now, listen to me, everyone. Quiet, folks. We're going to hear some words of wisdom from our distinguished hobo guest. <laughs> I hadn't intended to reveal my identity to you, but now I think I should. And then you'll know that I can have the train fixed. I am Norman P. Curtis, president of the CNFW Railroad. <laughs> Are you sure that throttle can't be fixed? <laughs> Don't you believe me? Norman, this is no time for jokes. Uh, but what? wait a minute, Kate. I'll prove it to you. Anybody got a dime? <laughs> oh, forget it, Norman. That thing's as phony as you are. What? It's got the same kind of connections with a telephone company you got with a railroad. None. <laughs> well, why is it here? Gives the hotel class. Which it's gonna need plenty of with you here. Norman, you're pathetic. Maybe Lon Hawker can fix that. He's a farmer. He also does blacksmithing. If he can mend a plow, why can't he forge that together? Well, how are we gonna get up to his place with no train? Cut through the woods to the county road and hitch a ride. Let's go, Charlie. It's worth a try. I just wanted to say, I'm awful sorry about Mr. Curtis. Kind of feel like it's my fault for inviting him to stay here. Oh, Kate, don't be blaming yourself. It's our fault, too. We'll let him drive the train. Kate, I'm kind of worried about Floyd and me going off and leaving you and the girls and Nutty Norman. But Uncle Joe's here. Well, that's what I mean. Can you handle two of them? <laughs> Get out of here, both of them. Kate. If I can only get to a telephone, I guarantee you, I can have that train running again. Well, the nearest telephone is in Hooterville. Well, isn't there any way I can get there? There's a hand car down by the water tower, but uh, that's a mighty long way to pump. Well, I was the stroke on the Yale varsity crew that beat Harvard, Princeton, and Cornell. Yeah. I liked him so much better before he started all that bragging. <laughs> What's the matter? You girls haven't touched a bite of your food. Not hungry. Me either. Uncle Joe, how can you eat at a time like this? Well, this is a perfect time. When Nutty Norman's at the table, nobody else had a chance. <laughs> How do you girls expect to do any dancing when you're not eating? Hmm. Who's going to be dancing? Now no one can get here for the jamboree. Oh, no, let's not give up. we got a lot of things going for us. Maybe Lon Hawker will forge the throttle back together again. Maybe Nutty Norman will... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Mr. Curtis will do something. Please, and... Kate, not while I'm eating. <laughs> well, he's certainly trying. He's pumping the hand car all the way to Hooterville. Oh, fine. It's not enough losing the train. Now the hand car is gone. <laughs> well, come on, girls. If you're not going to eat, pick up your plates, take them to the kitchen, and help me. And don't pay any attention to your Uncle Joe about anything he says about Mr. Curtis. I still say, in spite of everything that's happened, that man has something great inside him. Yeah, our food. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> oh, we're waiting for the train. Well, I, I wish you luck. <laughs> uh, pardon me. Would one of you ladies please let me have a dime? It's very important.
Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, operator. I want to talk person to person to General Frank Newton. <laughs> the number is code area 311. 555-8324. And I'm on extension 1111. Operator charge is to credit account 555-2368L184. Well, I just gave you the number. Code area 311. 555-8324. Extension 1111. Credit account is 555. 2368L184. <laughs> oh, oh, this number. <laughs> Why don't you say so? Uderville 3. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Frank. This is Norman. Well, how's my favorite general? <laughs> well, you old rascal, you've been fooling around with models long enough. How would you like to work on the real thing? <gasps> well, of course it's important. I wouldn't ask you otherwise. And Frank, some wonderful people are depending on it. Now, listen. I want you to get a hold of George Prentice in Detroit and Dave LaSalle in New York, and I want all of you here in Hooterville the first thing in the morning ready to go to work. Hooterville. Well, get out your map and your magnifying glass, and I'll tell you where it is. <laughs> Is he? That's the hobo Kate Bradley took in. They call him a Nutty Norman. <laughs> say one thing. You might as well say goodbye to your dime. <laughs> oh, you're very nice. <laughs> Showed up yet? Well, not yet, but the girls are out looking. Might as well take that stupid sign down. We ain't gonna have no jamboree. Uncle Joe, whatever you do, don't start acting gloomy and pessimistic in front of the girls. We gotta keep their spirits up. Okay. Mother! Any sign of the Hancock coming from Woodville? No, Mother. And it would just break your heart to see the poor old cannonball. Chickens are laying eggs in her and goats are chewing on her. It's terrible. Oh, baby, cheer up. Everything's going to be fine, isn't it, Uncle Joe? Oh, you bet. Just fine and dandy. <laughs> yeah, Mom! Oh, any sign of Floyd and Charles? Not a sign, Mother. Can we hide clear over to the county road? Well, now, don't get discouraged. Everything's going to be fine, isn't it, Uncle Joe? You bet. Just fine and dandy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to take this stupid sign down. We ain't going to have no jamboree. <laughs> down with the flare. <laughs> Norman, Norman, jar that loose. Kate, Kate. What's the matter? That freeloader, not a Norman. He's back and he brung his rat pack with him. Rat pack? Three more freeloaders, hobos just like him. And this time they're going to finish the cannonball for sure. What do you mean? They're swarming all over it, taking it apart. They're probably going to cart it up and haul it away and sell it for junk. <laughs> Kate, I wouldn't go down there if I was you. They look dangerous. Oh, I'll be all right. Well, yell if you need me. I'll be having a bite of lunch. <laughs> Frank, communication setups ready to go. Be with you in a minute. Norm, the valve rod is shot. What do you suppose kept her going? Habit. Well, I guess we'd better put another one in, huh? Norman. Hello, Kate. Well, good heavens, what are you doing to the train? We're getting it ready for the jamboree. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Well, I declare you brought in a whole repair crew. Yeah, well, you never saw a crew like this before. Oh, they, 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 they look very experienced. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Mrs. Bradley, the little lady I told you about. Kate, I want you to meet General Frank Newton. How do you do, ma'am? General. A retired man. 
Yes, all he does now is serve as chairman of the board of the Michigan and Southwest Railroad. Goodness. And this is George Prentice. He's president of Worldwide Airways. Then, Newt, let me have the wrench. And the fellow up in the baggage car is Dave LaSalle. Hey, Dave! He's president of Intercontinental Telephone. Well, they're certainly a mighty distinguished group. Kate, the boys have come a long way, and, well, they're working pretty hard. I don't suppose you could scare up a little. Food. Yeah, <laughs> well, of course I can. Just give me 15 minutes, and then uh, bring your group up to the dining room. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Hello, Peterson? Peterson? Frank Newton. Now listen, I want the throttle lever off the Emma Sweeney. That's the wood burner in the north wing. Right. Mighty handy having your own railroad museum, isn't it? <laughs> Dave, call my office. I'll have a plane pick it up. What good will that do? You can't land a jet around here. They still make parachutes. They can drop it right down the smokestack. Hey, Peterson! Peterson, put that throttle lever in a metal drop crate and rush it out of the airport. Worldwide Airlines will pick it up. Dave, uh, get me my office. Uh, just a minute, Norman. Dave, put me through to my office first. Okay. Operator, connect me with the main office of Worldwide Airlines. And don't give me that busy circuit routine. You can clear to Chicago, Denver, New Orleans. It doesn't matter, but put it through. My own company, and I can't get a line. <laughs> They're all just like Norman, nuttier than fruitcakes. <laughs> By the way, Frank, did you take advantage of the market tip I gave you on Western mining? Yeah, bought 10,000 shares. Drop six points in a week. <laughs> Don't blame me. I got the tip from my secretary. You've just got the wrong girl. Mine steered me into general products, and I made almost a quarter of a million in three weeks. Now, that's the secretary. Not only that, she's learning to type. <laughs> <laughs> with all your money, what are you going to do with another quarter million? I think I'll buy a locomotive like the Hooterville Cannonball. Put it in the backyard and work on it weekends. I haven't had so much fun in years. <laughs> How about it, Norman? Do you want to sell the Hooterville Cannonball? Sorry, boy. She's not for sale. Oh. <laughs> Squirrel would have a feast in there. Kate, Kate, we got to get them hobos out of here as quick as we can. They're plum raving loony. You ought to hear them talking about the money they got. Uncle Joe, when men are down on their luck, they're bound to exaggerate a little. It makes them feel better. Yeah, well, come listen to the guff they're spouting. It's plum crazy. <laughs> Norman, this is magnificent. Why, it's even better than we used to get at the officers' clubs. Well, I wouldn't know about that, General. I was an enlisted man myself. I've eaten all over the world, France, Italy, the Orient, the finest ocean liners. But this is the best, the most delicious food I've ever eaten. <laughs> no wonder you're so fond of this place, Norman. Well, it isn't only the food. There's also Kate. Oh, yeah. Ah, I see what you mean. I don't blame you. Mighty attractive woman. Oh, no. I don't think they're talking so crazy. <laughs> Kate, we got it. Oh, oh. our hawker came through. Just like new. Oh, that's wonderful, boys. Take her down and put her right on. Oh, please, Kate, feed us first. We're starving. I'll clear out all the freeloaders. <laughs> Hurry up, fellas. Now, that jet will be through here with us. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Curtis, what have you got against our train? <laughs> That wind drift, it ought to land right in our lap. When I run an airline, I run an airline. Look, Mom, it's falling right down by the tracks. I wonder what it could be. Well, whatever it is, it's for them. They're running after it. Kate? I was wrong about those men, and I'm big enough to admit it. They ain't hobos. They're spies. <laughs> <laughs> By golly, 
Lovely Norman, I believe she's as good as ever. <laughs> she's better than ever. We fix things on there you didn't even know about. Sure. They've been riding the rails along. They're experts. <laughs> Let her roll, boys. We're gonna have a jamboree after all. <laughs> What do you mean I could use Phoebe for my secretary? Well, she'll give you some real hot tips on the market. Uh, listen, Phoebe, what will General Products come and do on the market next week? Going up. Hello, Lydia. Nanny, come. Well, hello. Welcome to Shady Rest. Welcome to Shady Rest. Oh, Uncle Joe, this is going to be the best jamboree yet. And I didn't even think it was going to come off. Me neither. Boy, what a jinx that nutty Norman turned out to be. What do you mean? Well, he was responsible for fixing the train. Well, that's the least he could have done. Nothing ever happened to it until he came. I tell you, Kate, the man's a jinx. I thought you said he was a spy. Well, that's the worst kind. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Hello Floyd. Hello. What happened to your hand? Firebox door bit me. <laughs> the darn thing ain't worked in 20 years, and them fellas had to come along and put a spring. <laughs> huh? Floyd's the only one can double on fiddle. Oh, how can you have a jamboree without a fiddler? That's easy. You don't. Sorry, folks. Like I said, Kate, that feller's a jinx. Watch it, Joe. Here he comes. Yeah, let's go, Kate. The boys haven't been to a jamboree in years. They're chaving as a bit. Well, they're not going to need a harness tonight. What do you mean? You had to go fix the firebox door. Yeah, you wrecked his fiddling hand. That's what you did. Now, let's see you fix that. Well, that's the easiest thing in the world. Come on, Floyd. Ow. Yeah, he'll fix it all right. He'll probably wreck the other hand. <laughs> the jinx. <laughs> if it hadn't been for Norman Curtis. Don't you think it's about time you admitted you were wrong? Oh, I guess so. But how was I to know he could play the fiddle? Mrs. Bradley, may I have the honor of this dance? With pleasure, General. General. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Don't be a wallflower. <laughs> decorations and get busy. Where's Uncle Joe? In the dining room, Mom. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you promised to hang that sign out front for us. Kate, I've only got two hands and one mouth. <laughs> well, I guess the girls and I can manage it. 
How about a little help from your hobo friend? Who? That no good moocher that's taking you for free room and board. I presume you're referring to Mr. Norman Curtis. I'm referring to Nutty Norman, the freeloader. <laughs> Uncle Joe. Mr. Curtis may be temporarily financially embarrassed, but he is an ambitious, intelligent, refined, well-educated gentleman. Don't waste all that hot air. Put it in here. <laughs> You're going to be sorry when you find out where he is right now. In the kitchen, eating up all the food? <laughs> no, sir. He's gone to Pixley with Floyd and Charlie. He's got a plan to attach a flat car to the back of the train, put benches on it, and bring 50 extra people to our jamboree. Now, where would he get a flat car? He, he says he has connections with the railroad. <laughs> His only connections are with a knife and fork. Well, Floyd and Charlie thought enough of his plan to take him into Pixley with them. In fact, they gave him the throttle. That's dangerous. Why? He might put ketchup on it and eat it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sure looks happy, don't he? Of course he does. Poor old hobo, all of his life he's been riding the rods, and now he's at the throttle of the Hooterville Cannonball. Hey, Norman. Yeah. You really think you can get that flat car? Well, I told you, fellas, I got connected with this railroad. <laughs> office. No, I'm sorry. Mr. Curtis is out of the city for a few days. Secretary of Labor? Yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office. No, I'm sorry. He won't be able to go to Washington for the White House conference. <laughs> Mr. Curtis' office. No, no, I'm sorry. He's someplace between Hooterville and Pixley. I don't know where they are either. <laughs> Uncle Joe and I'll watch from the sidelines. Well, speak for yourself, Kate. I can shake a foot with any of these young bucks. Come on, Uncle Joe. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 Look, two more fellas. Now we both have partners. Come on, Charlie. We'll show you you dance with the jamboree. Hold it, hold it, girls. I'm afraid there ain't gonna be a jamboree. Oh, oh, what are you talking about? There's no way for the folks to get here. That fella Curtis has wrecked the cannonball. Wrecked the cannonball? What? He just as good as wrecked it. Busted the throttle right smack off. Can't run a train without a throttle. How'd it happen? He tried to show off going up Bleaker's Hill. Yanked the throttle back so hard he snapped it right in two. Oh, Put near oh. pulled a rod right out of the baller. Yeah, Floyd and I had to pound it back with a block of wood. Shut off the steam. Well, what'd you do, walk all the way from Bleaker's Hill? No, we let it roll backwards and coasted to here. <laughs> well, Kate, what do you think of your refined, intelligent Mr. Curtis now? He's wrecked a train and ruined our jamboree. I hope you're satisfied. Shh, here he comes. Well, don't just stand there, Kate. Go get him something to eat. He's probably hungry after all he did today. <laughs> <laughs>